our dinner and uh, swing your ballots here with a big hand. Why didn't you start waving? I'm super excited to be here tonight. You know, I, I was talking to my wife the other day, Bill, and I, I realized I've been doing magic for over 50 years. I can't wow. even believe I'm saying it. Yeah. And 50 years ago, I was a little boy playing uh, with cards. And 50 years later, I'm a big boy playing with cards. And not much has changed, but, but, but technology has changed. In the old days, uh, I used to go to the store to buy the playing cards. Think about how many playing cards I've used over 50 years. Wow. It's a lot, right? I used to get them at Costco. We used to have the 12 pack there. But uh, with the technology it is now, I just order them online. It's a lot quicker. As a matter of fact, I, I don't know if you've heard about this uh, this one here, but this have you ever heard of uh, Instacart? This is called the uh, Instadeck, actually. They, they, what you do is you order them ahead of time. You pay for the entire thing. And it's a catalog that you get in the mail. They have the blue and the white, they have the small ones. They even have uh, the color. It's good. They have black, the uh, the light green on set right now, the blue. But I'm more of a right now. You know what I'm saying? So all we got to do is just give it a little bit of a tick, tick. And it actually comes right off the cat kind of cool. Now, I get to play with these later on, which is good. But uh, I feel like I'm in a library here. What's going on? Come on. Hey, 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 hey. All right, the stud. I don't know how I tell you. All right, so now that we've got the, the deck of playing cards, let's see if we can create uh, an illusion. Now, in the dictionary, an illusion is defined as a false perception of what your mind thinks it sees. That's just a fancy way of saying you think you're seeing one thing, but you're really seeing something else. Now, tonight, we're going to try to see if we can create an illusion, but I, I need to... So would you mind sell, signing a card for me? This is a clicking marker. You're ready to lock and load it. Just uh, name a card that you see here, and I'll bring it to the top. Jack, who? Second plus. Ah, there we go. All right, so go ahead and just put your name right across the uh, there. And what's today's date? What's today's date, too? 26. 26. 26. Nice try, Buck. Yeah, I thought <laughs> when you're retired. <laughs> there. All right, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, all right. So, uh, Jack, no clubs. Now, What's the illusion that I'm going to try to create? Well, I'm going to make it appear as though the card is being destroyed. But folks, please keep in mind that no time did any card be harmed during this presentation. Okay? So uh, a little uh, illusion with the plane. Here we go. Now to begin, I first need to crease this card both lengthwise and widthwise. Uh, I'm working with the creases in the card here, so it uh, a little bit easier to work with the shadows and the lights. Now the first illusion, I'm going to make it appear as though that the card is being ripped out set halfway. So you might actually think you actually hear it. That looks pretty fair, right? Faith. It's not really happening. It's an illusion. A false perception of what your mind thinks it sees. We take it a step further. Rip it into two. That looks pretty good from that angle, yeah? How about over there? It's not really happening, Bill. But you know what? This is the junk you're going to take it a step further. We go ahead and rip it into uh, four pieces. And I know what you're saying. Big whoop. Anybody can rip the card, right? The hard part's putting the back together. For now, we're going to use a little bit of uh, fire. A little bit of fire and a little bit of magic. And anything is possible. Check this out. Oh, a false perception of what your mind thinks. It's there we go. All right, a little bit of magic. All right, your silly part. You got just like that. The Jack of Clubs is signed. So I got a little silver here for you too. A little uh, older here, so we can. Uh, got a little Let's give Sue a big hand one more time. Good mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right. 50 years ago, playing with magic. I tell you, my brother Bruce, uh, he was about the same age. We would watch cartoons, we'd do magic tricks, we'd play a lot of board games. As a matter of fact, uh, something interesting I found recently. Uh, a quick question Does anybody know what these are? No, not very much. Exactly, right? It's worldwide. Everybody knows what this is. It's been played all over the world in different variations, right? Well, I discovered it. it's a new company called Monetech Industries. It's a security financial thing. They, they, they actually made a new product called the Money Sheet. Now check this out. They're able to change hundred dollar bills to monopoly money. No, I know it sounds crazy, but let me explain. You see, on their website it says that they believe that, that everyone should hide all their wealth in monopoly money because every bill deserves an upgrade. And your security is number one. And I'll, let me show you what I mean here. Let's say, uh, for example, you're going uh, abroad. You go to Italy, you're gonna need two wallets or that, right? One gets stolen, the other one maybe they have money left. Not anymore. All you gotta do is take a couple of these bills here. Let's just grab uh, like a five for like a one, two, three, four, five. Now let's say it, you put these in your wallet and uh, Leonardo comes by, he looks he, he's not gonna take it. It's called paper, right? He leaves the wallet. Now when he leaves, you just take the money back and you just give it a squeeze. And then it actually changes into the hundred dollar bills, which is kinda crazy, right? Which is crazy. Now I got it a thank you, I appreciate that. Now, here's the cool part. Uh, let's say the guy uh, gets you when you actually change. That's a possibility, right? So uh, when he puts them inside his uh, wallet, they actually change back to the money that it is. 
So that's money tag. That's the money shield uh, brought to you uh, by uh, Ravis. A little, uh, yeah, there we go. Right, I'm good. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know what? Buy yourself up pretty. There you go. All right, there you go. Make go wild. There we go. All right. All right, all right. All right, now uh, talking about money, it's time to uh, see if we can't, uh, uh, see if you guys can't win a little bit of money. The new game that I call is that time to play that game everyone's crazy about. Bada bing, bada boom. That's right. Where you can win big cash prizes. Yeah. Well, maybe more like $20. Okay. <laughs> hey, don't we keep here. Your odds are very slim, but you're going to have a great time. I hope I don't play that game. What a beat! What a politics side of That's it. All right. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. All right. Welcome to the game, folks. This is Mana Aim Bada Boom. Let me tell you how the game is played, and then we'll play it together. Now, you're going to have an opportunity to uh, win some money here. Now, there's five envelopes. One through five. Four of them have a, uh, a Raven, no value, uh, funny money buck, right? And it's, it's a little uh, silver here. All the trash is on the way out when you go there. Uh, you possibly buy that. So, four of those have the uh, funny money, but one of those has a twenty dollar bill. Now uh, it's up to you guys to try to figure out what it is. Now I placed uh, words on these uh, cards to sort of mess with your mind. So so we'll start out now, Bill. I'm going to start with you tonight, and uh, I'm going to explain the cards first, and then you will uh, make a decision. Now, uh, Bill, if you pick out uh, number one, this this one has uh, something written on it. That's uh, actually upside down. Now uh, they all have something written on, just not the word something. It's, it's actually something else. But then you got to ask yourself, when I put the money in an envelope that says something. Why, in fact, we all know that every one of the envelopes has something in it, even the envelopes that have something that you don't even want, right? I don't think about it too hard. Now, now if, you don't go, if you don't go for something, you might go for number two, which is uh, nothing, right? And as I promised, it does say something, but something else. Actually, no, yeah. Now, I put the money inside, nothing. I mean, that's almost like two obvious. It's almost like a double, double bluff, right? Um, that's not a question. I'm just saying it out loud. There we go. All right. Now, what? No, yeah, okay. Now, yeah, if you don't go for number two, which is nothing, you might go for number three which is yours. Now, everybody likes what's rightfully theirs, but this one is marked yours. Now, you might not think, why would I put the money inside and what's yours? Because you, think, you might think it's mine, but it's actually yours because it says one. That's number three. <laughs> you don't go for three, Bill? You might go for number four, which says mine. I'm going to point out right away, mine's a lot bigger than yours. <laughs> <laughs> it's just your name. There we go. Right all right. All right. Now, why would I put the money inside and look that's mine? Well, you might think that's, that's where I put the money. It's obvious, right? You might think it's yours, but it's not because this one has yours, so it's mine. Last one, Bill. Yeah, it's yours. Number five, you may pick the envelope that says sex. Now, I think, why would I put the uh, money inside an envelope that says sex? Well, I might be gambling. You're the kind of guy that might not ask for sex and help perform, right? <laughs> so with that said, Bill, uh, you've got five choices here. What do you think the $20 bill is, my friend? I'm going to go with yours. Yours, all right. I'm surprised you didn't go with sex, by the way. Okay, all right. All right. All right. Words. Okay, all right, all right, all right. All right. They're going to go for yours. Let's see if we got this here. And uh, Sue, so you're going to be the eyes of the audience here. Let's take a look here. Nothing inside the envelope. You had uh, won the, uh, yeah, the silver DM at it. Okay, well, we'll give it to you later. Okay. <laughs> All right, now, uh, how about you? What was your name, sir? Steve. Steve, well, you've got uh, four choices. Now, uh, what, what the other one has got, yours is gone, but we still have sex. And nine to six. You got to go with sex, right? Like, I felt. All these women in here, and he picks an envelope with sex. All right, there we go. Are you sure you don't want what's mine? Okay, okay, so nothing. Right, here we go, Fox Mix. Let's take a look at these. All right. Now, look at that. You actually. No, it was the, uh, the Raven Buck. One more time. There we go. Oh, this guy's not coming out. Yeah, all right, all right. Hold on. Now. All right, now it's uh, your turn. You said your name, sir. Uh, Bob. Are you sure? All right. Bob. <laughs> you can send it back when you're warning you about it. Yeah, now, Bob, we got three left. Uh, he already took the sack, so he had a lot on that. We got mine, nothing, or something. What do you think? Nothing. You want nothing? You get to have something. Well, this is like a double, double bluff. You think maybe it's... I think so. I think it is a double bluff. Nothing you shall get. There we go. Let's see what this is. Look at this. There's the uh, Raven Buck. There we go. Let's get my hand on that. There we go. Oh, look at this. Sorry. Now, my brother, what's your name again? Pete, you got a 50-50 chance here. I mean, the odds are best in your favor. Now, you get to take something or you get to have mine. Uh, it's completely up to you. What do you think? That's right. Oh, we, I don't know. There might be something in here. All right, let's go with mine. Let's take a look. Let's see, last time we'll Ooh, look at that. You didn't pick that out. Let's uh, let's give my hand off a try one more time. Oh no! No, all right, all right. Okay, we're gonna cut that. All right. I think right now, folks. Uh, that proves my money's flying all over. But that proves that I actually uh, 
mess with your minds, and I want the money. So uh, let's give myself a big hand. Hey, hey, hey. I want to show you one last piece before. I, you don't trust me. I can see they. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> they might all have funny money in there, but uh, no. So you're gonna you're gonna go ahead and take and say, look at this. There's the twenty dollars wow. bill. Wow. Let's give everybody a big hand for trying one more time. That's our getting. They must play it, but a big but a big. Right, that's right. We told you your odds were slim, but we're going to talk next time. This is Tom Color Bell signing out. We'll see you. Tom Color Bell. But a big and but a who knows that? Who knows what Tom Carbell is? Is he New York? Is he? Carbell? That's right. You're going to take that. That's a little inside joke there for New York. All right, all right. Now, I've got one last piece. Now, you may not realize this, but I'm originally from New York. I know it's hard to tell. I lost the ex at the long time. But, but, but I, I actually, uh, growing up in New York City, I developed quite a fascination. But let me explain. I come from a very large Italian family. Well, we all like playing games, you know what I mean? Like my Uncle Petey. He played that three-card money game. His son, Petey Boy, three-shell game. It was amazing. But our favorite game was played by our granddad, Sal the Talk of Olive. They called him Sally Boy for short. Sure. Really young face. He's real looking, that kind of thing. It's a New York thing. Now, now Sally Boy played a game known as uh, Find the Little Red Ball. It was a game on Winston. He used the paper coffee cup and a little red ball. The way we tried to play this is he would hide the ball under one of three places. Either underneath the cup, inside the closed hand, or back inside the pocket. And if you're able to figure out what it was, the cup, the hand, or the pocket, you win the money. Yeah, it's easy, right? And a good old Sally boy, he had the same thing. I mean, I know, it's crazy. And not only that, but he cheated. Uh, it's true, he used the uh, trick cup. And you wouldn't be able to tell, uh, from the top or the bottom, but he used uh, his finger, the polite one, if you know what I'm saying. And he would push that ball right through the bottom. But wait, there's more. I always want to say that, but there really is more. Hey, you see, good old Brad that built a little portal with three machines inside. I'd have a pretty good imagination. It's more like a trap door. So what he would do is he'd throw that ball inside there and it would completely disappear. I know, it doesn't go that far, it's just inside the trap door. Now we were told in the old days you'd have to tap on it or wrap it to get the red ball out. This is the future. This one has a little light activation built inside, like one of those hand sanitizer machines. You never know those days, right? Forget about it. Check this out. Watch the hand. Right underneath the cup. Bada bing, bada boom. And just like that, right? Hell. Now, I tell you, great man's a cheater. He let you win when he wants you to win. But if he wants you to lose, change the game completely. And just when you think you might know where that ball is, it's no longer underneath the cup at all. But it's back inside. The pocket. There you go. There we go. Now, not only was Grandpa good with his hands, but he was amazing with this direction. Now, it's a known fact the eyes can't track more than two items at a time. You throw a third item into the mix, it'll make it dizzy. That's what Grandpa was open on. You didn't know where to look. Between the cup, the ball, and the stick, he would totally get confused. Matter of fact, he would hit that ball, and he'd place it inside his hand, and with the stick as a misdirection, the ball would actually travel right back underneath the cup. It's kind of crazy, right? Right? I know. You love what I was losing. Now, at this point, he was so brazen that he didn't even have to close it. Down at three. One, two, three. That ball. Back of the pickup, right? <laughs> now it's at this point in time when a lot of people quit the game and rightly so you think about it, they've already lost a bunch of bets. It's not good for grandpa. Or grandpa for that matter, right? He needs to keep the investor. That's what he used a sucker move. There's always a sucker move in every game. That's what he uh, he says, folks, come on back, I tell you what I'm gonna do, I'll make it even easier. You hear that, Bill, you're running the other way. But it's just for fun. He says, I tell you, I get rid of the stick, I know it's confusing, make it dizzy. Uh we'll just use the cup. All you got to do is keep your eye on the cup. And there's only three places that this can be, right? You're inside the uh, the cup, inside the closed hand, or back inside the pocket. Uh, again, the cup, the hand, or the pocket, right? Now, just as he put it inside the pocket, a lady screamed. Grandpa turned around, and old man lifted the cup up. But he didn't see it. I, I was a little kid at the time. I tried to warn him, but he pushed me away. He just walked over to the cup, and he said, Place your bets. Place your bets. Everybody but on the pocket, even me. I, I seen the old man pick the thing out. It was up in there. Grandpa smiled and he released out for the cup, but he said what he always did. I never lose. Thank you. There we go. Now, uh, I learned two lessons that day. One, uh, Grandpa was never going to give me my money back. And two, he showed me how this shenanigans work. Anything I learned, Magic. I'm going to show you how this works. I'm going to use a clear glass here to make this happen. This way, normally you wouldn't say because it's, it's travel, it's invisible. This time I'll make it happen underneath my hand. I'll put front of my hand inside the glass and I'll do it in under, uh, let's say, Three seconds, okay, and I'll cover the glass. Watch close, check this out. One, two, three. 
just like that. There it is, folks. The game you never want to play now is find a little red ball by my lightning bad Sally Boy. Now, one last thing, guys. If the cops were to string upon this right now, they, they would, he would still get busted. They know what this is, right? But he's smarter. See, Grandpa, the cops come about halfway down. He takes that ball. And, and what he does, he, he, he actually puts it inside the class. But before he does that, he squeezes it. Because he wants to change it into a little chip. Wow. And just then, when a cop comes a little bit closer, he lifts up the empty coffee cup. And he says the magic words he learned when he was just a child. Bada bing, bada boom. Just like that, he lowered the cup. And he poured himself a high oh. cup of coffee. <laughs> now, just as he emptied the cup, he realized that the... You know, that is great. So once again, he lifted the cup up. Let's say it all together with the magic words. Bada bing, bada boom. Just like that, he lowered the cup and he poured himself the cream that he readily deserved. Yeah, there we go. Now, folks, uh, more of a story, you know, by the time the cops came out, hey, hey, you know, Grandpa was another fancy guy drinking another classy cup of coffee. Uh, bottom line is, uh, you stay away from the uh, little red ball. Yeah, I'll keep drinking my little cup too. Of course. Thank you guys very much. My name is Raven S. White, so let's give a big hand on my time. Come on, yeah.